Hi, I'm Denchi, but before I begin this video, there's this blog called Easy Tuto that appears to be stealing a bunch of Linux YouTuber and just like tech YouTuber videos for some reason. So, for example, here's a video by Dorian.slash and it's posted here on Easy Tuto. It is the original link, so if you watched a video on here, you'll be watching you know, it off YouTube, so the view and the watch time and all that stuff still gets, you know, brought over to Dorian's channel. But if you click on the video, it redirects to an ad, so clearly there is some monetization at play here. And it does link the original source and the description of the videos here, and obviously the video isn't just being shamelessly re-uploaded, but, I mean, Devin Barton is claiming it as his, so you don't, you don't want Devin Barton claiming your videos. But anyway, this is just a little stupid thing. The reason I mentioned this is because one of my videos ended up on this website and I was just really confused at first and then I, you know, understood, oh, somebody just shamelessly put it on their blog. I think it's some kind of bot or something. The funniest thing is that there's only one subscriber on their email. It's probably the creator just to make themselves feel good or something. But anyway, on to the actual point of this video. All right, so I run Arch Linux. I used to run Manjaro, but now I run Arch. And I made a video a while back talking about why I used to run Manjaro, why I liked Manjaro, and what software I used on Manjaro, and all that kind of stuff. It's called what I use on Linux, or something like that. And basically all this video is, is that, but the kind of redone for what I use now, because what the software I use and the distribution that I use changes very rapidly. So why do I like Arch over Manjaro? And what things do I prefer about Manjaro are a couple of the things which I'd like to talk about in this video. So first of all, Arch has more up-to-date repositories. So that's obviously a benefit if you like more up-to-date software, you know, bleeding edge stuff. But the real benefit is that you never have to use DKMS. Now what is DKMS? So like, I have like drivers for NVIDIA and I want to install them on Manjaro, I'd have to specify the specific version for my own kernel or use the DKMS versions that just insert themselves as, you know, a kernel, I think a kernel module, I'm not really 100% sure, I think that's how it works. Um, and they can work with whatever kernel, right? But it's a relatively slower process and I think it's even a bigger package. Uh, on Arch, you just type in, you want to install NVIDIA and because the, like, a kernel and the NVIDIA drivers are kept on the same repositories handled by the same people. It means that you install the NVIDIA drivers, they're just for the latest Arch Linux kernel. And if you have the latest Arch Linux regular Linux kernel, then you can install them quite easily. So it's it's just one of these little benefits. Having more up-to-date software is generally better because it simplifies a lot of things. You don't have to deal with you know something looking for a certain older version, something looking for a certain, you know, newer version of a piece of software, like a certain library or whatever, because most of the time the Arch people in the repositories have already gotten it figured out. Sometimes there are some problems, but they have an RSS feed for that where they just notify you of the stuff. So that, I guess, brings me to the second thing I really like about Arch Linux. So opening up Firefox again, and uh, we can go to the Arch Wiki. So this is the installation guide on the Arch Wiki. And the Arch Wiki is quite possibly one of the best wikis, in fact, is the best wiki you can have for anything Linux. This isn't really a benefit of Arch Linux itself. However, if you use Arch Linux, you'll find this the most useful. You can consult the Arch Wiki for pretty much everything, even using like a Debian system. Manjaro obviously benefits a lot from using something like the Arch Wiki if you want to use it. There is a Manjaro Wiki, but it's much worse than this. The reason the Arch Wiki is really useful is because anything, so let's say I want to learn about SDDM, has its own page and like a, a bunch of chapters on everything and there's example commands and things you can do. Like for example, I was looking for auto login in, in SDDM to log in you know, my account automatically. Go to 2.1, it's right there. You got an example perfectly printed out over here, tells you where it is and it's all like, I know this sounds like obvious stuff, but a lot of wikis can't nail this stuff. And also the explanations are really clear. It's generally written very professionally and it's a really, really good wiki. So that's another thing I really like about Arch because you can use the Arch wiki in you know a much better way. Another thing I like about Arch is the vanilla packages. So moving on to you know that whole package stuff, so I guess going back to that topic, all the packages in Arch, or at least as many as possible, besides things that are like kernel stuff, are basically not modified. So an example on Debian, if I was to install Debian and I wanted to install Debian with KDE, you'll notice instantly that you install it and oh my god, you get a specialized Debian theme with a Debian icon and Debian stuff. 
and you don't really get to customize a lot about it um, in terms of not really custom. Sorry, you don't get the original clean experience that as the developers intended KDE to be. Same thing for GNOME. If I install Debian with GNOME, for example, you'll instantly get a system that has a Debian themed GNOME desktop and you know, that ain't so good because you end up with something modified from what the developers originally wanted there to be. And on Arch, if I install KDE, it's clean default KDE. If I install GNOME, it's the default GNOME. It's not modified. It's not an Arch version of GNOME. It's not all that kind of stuff. So that makes stuff much more simpler. Another thing I really like about uh, Arch is the AUR and AUR package managers. So for example, I use DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve, if you don't know, takes quite a long process to convert from the original .run file that you get off the website and then a Debian file that you get from converting that .run file to a Debian file with a special script somebody made, uh, Daniel Tuffvesson, I believe. And uh, then you take that Debian file and you install it manually. But you don't really have to do that. On Arch, there's a, a package in the AUR, so the Arch user repository, called DaVinci Resolve. You type in the command to install DaVinci Resolve, it downloads all the things for you, it does all the conversion for you, it compresses the package, and it installs. There's no complicated process of having to download everything yourself or making a script to do it all for you. It's all automated, and, and you know the community maintains it. And it's all well moderated, there's never really any malware on the AUR, and it's a generally really useful tool because you find a lot of software which you generally would have to download off the internet or build from source yourself on the AUR. A lot of stuff on the AUR is actually built from source, but most of the time, it's uh, you know binaries, either proprietary binaries or binaries and stuff, and you install them really easily off the AUR. So that's uh, compensating for the fact that Arch's regular repositories don't really have as much software as other things. That's pretty much it for Arch Linux. Those are the main things that I like. But in the end, that itself is a point for Arch Linux. So Arch Linux is very minimalist because it's very unmodified from uh, you know just regular GNU Linux. If I was to take GNU Linux and add a package manager and add these repositories of Arch Linux, I would basically have Arch. And that's the great thing about Arch Linux, is the fact that it is very, very pure. It's very simple. There's no unnecessary tools. There's no unnecessary programs or things. It's basically just pure GNU slash Linux with a package manager called Pacman. And a couple of things to you know make the system better. That's basically it. It's very, very minimalist. And that's what really makes it so good. There's not a lot of things about Arch that make it unique. That's why it can run pretty much all software out there for Linux. It's a very, very great distribution, and that's why I use it. Now, the only downside to Arch is what a lot of people cite is um, stability. They say that Arch is unstable, so once I update Arch, things will go all unstable and weird. But that's not really true all the time. So first of all, if you're having issues with Arch you know, being unstable, or if you're worried about, you know, Arch going all unstable or having a kernel panic or like packages conflicting or whatever. They have a news page, so latest news. They have an RSS feed that you can subscribe to and you can get the news of when things are messed up and you can fix it. Now, what if you don't want to manually fix it? I've never had to manually downgrade a package and I've been using Arch for a couple of months now. Now, obviously that isn't a lot of time and there haven't been some really large issues and I use the desktop environment. I don't use my own rice. I don't like have my own scripts for everything. But generally, Arch Linux remains quite stable. The problem people have with Arch Linux is when they mess up the install or they mess up something, and then it comes to bite them back later. That's what you really don't want to do. I was having issues with swap because I forgot to add it to my F stab. It took like five seconds to fix, and now I have that virtual memory in my system. It's all these little things that you may forget during the manual install that then cause problems later, and then people, you know, get annoyed. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Arch Linux is a great rolling release distribution. It's got latest packages. It's got simple package management. It's got up-to-date packages, pure packages. It's got the AUR, which is great. It's got a great wiki, and it's not exactly a super unstable distribution, as many people say. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and good bye. <laughs>